Hello, and welcome to another episode of EPMS Tech Talk. I'm Joanne LaFlam. I'm Chris Costin. Chris, what would you like to talk about today? Well, in some prior videos, we talked about pre-press setup. Mm -hmm. So yep. I thought maybe we could jump ahead and maybe do some post-press. Sure. You know, some of those type of processes. Okay. Uh, well, why don't we start with a cutting process, which is typically one of the first things you do after press. Mm -hmm. All right? All right, sure. So let's uh, go into file maintenance. And, of course, I'm going to go under cost centers, and we're going to get on to post-press now. And I have a process, uh, excuse me, a cost center set up, 5,000 for my cutter. And the first thing that we'll do is we'll set up a, a post-press process for cutting the parent sheet. Mm -hmm. Now, that's something you would do before the press, but because it's on a piece of post-press equipment, typically you set it up in post-press. I mean, the post-press screens... Uh, and fields are really designed for that equipment. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it is a post-press piece of equipment. So we set it up there, but we can, the way we set it up, um, defining it as a parent sheet cutting, we'll let Enterprise know it's happening before the press. It'll even schedule it before the press. Okay, good. Okay. okay. So I'm going to, with my cutting cost center highlighted, I'm going to click on Add to add a process. And we'll, uh, since this is Cost center 5,000, we'll make this process 5,005. And we'll call this cutting, but I'm going to put a dash after it and say parent or parent sheet. And that's what's going to print on the job ticket, so you'll know it's, that's what it's, the process is for, cutting the parent sheet. Now, the costing method here, what you want to select for a costing method in any post-press operation is what is going into the process. Well, in this case, the parent sheet is what's going into the process. What's coming out will be the press sheet. So we'll select parent sheet as our costing method, and then we'll come down here in the bottom section and fill out the all-inclusive rate. So I'm going to put that in at, say, uh, we'll do $100 an hour. We'll put our direct manufacturing at $65. Um, you can put in a minimum cost if you'd like. Let's come down to the units per cycle field. Now the units per cycle field, this is what, um, how many units, and in this case parent sheets, are you cutting at one time? Mm -hmm. Well, that's going to vary depending on the thickness of the paper, sure. and I'm going to show you how to vary that in a minute. And that's going to, that variance is going to be dependent upon, as I said, the thickness or the caliper that you have set up in your paper. But what if you don't have a caliper in your paper? Well, you mm -hmm. have to have some sort of default. So that's yep. what we'll put here in this process. Okay. So we'll default it to maybe 250 sheets. Okay. okay? The cycles per hour is basically your speed. How many parent sheets, or um, should I say lifts, can you do in an hour on this cutter? So maybe we can do about 90 an hour. So I'm going to put 90 in there. Now that, as I said, is going to be the number of lifts, because that's what this process is. Your, your, uh, your cutter has a lift, you're putting your paper in, and you can think about it and how many to do just one cut in that lift. So okay. um, that, that would be the speed, 90 lifts in an hour. So we're okay. going to do 90 sets of 250 in one hour. Correct. Okay. Correct. Sure. Okay, set up minutes. How long does it take to set up this cutter? So you'll put in 5, 10, whatever that might be for your particular cutter. The inches per cycle field. Now this field is a real key field in a cutter. This is what determines, um, you know, you'd put in exactly what the lift is in your cutter. But by putting in an inches per cycle uh, value here, um, it lets, it lets uh, Enterprise know it's going to use the caliper of the paper to figure out how many of those units it can do at a time. Sure. Okay, so that's the only time you would fill in a units per, excuse me, an inches per cycle uh, field in a post-press process. It would be in things like cutting, mm -hmm. drilling, where you're also putting in multiple sheets at a time, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe a boxing process if, if you're boxing by the height of the box. Right. Okay? All right. So in this case, um, say this particular cutter has a two-inch lift. Now, if you do have helpers, you can set up a helper code and put in a default number of helpers. The next field we want to look at is percent for additional repetitions. The reps are for repetitions. And in this particular process, a repetition is a cut. Now, that first cut that I'm going to do, I have to uh, put the whole stack of paper into the um, lift. The second cut I don't have to do that, it's already there. I might have to turn it a little bit, but it's not gonna take as much time to do that second cut mm -hmm. as it is to do the first one. Right. So the second cut would be additional repetition, a third cut would be an additional repetition. So maybe it only takes 70% of mm -hmm. 
of the normal speed to do the second, third, fourth cut because the paper's already there. Gotcha. So that's what that percent for additional reps is for. Okay. Okay. So I'll put in 70% here. Reps per pass means how many repetitions can you do at a time? Well, in this case with cutting, you can only make, do one cut at a time. If I were drilling, I might be able to drill th two holes or three holes at a time. Um, but in this case, as I said, it would just be one. These fields, number of pockets, setup per pocket, slow down per pocket, and pockets per helper, are all for doing um, collating type processes. So we could skip right over those. We're going to come down to the cycle description, unit description, repetition description. These are simply labels. These will help your um, estimator um, or CSR who's entering the estimator order know what they have to enter in those fields. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have to tell what is a cycle, what is a unit, what is a repetition. Yep. Okay. Okay. So in this case, a cycle description is going to be a lift. Each cycle is one lift. A unit description is going to be a sheet. Or in this case, I'm going to put in sheets. I'm going to make it plural because it's going to show up on, um, when I select this process as an estimate or, in an estimate or an order, it's going to say sheets per lift. And then my repetition description is what the repetitions are, which would be the number of cuts. So I'll put that in as cuts. You can, um, some of these other fields here are for, um, if you were doing roll, or something with a roll stock, so we'll uh, move over that. You can put in make re ready spoilage, although with a cutter, you know, typically you're not going to spoil it. If you, if you do spoil it, you're going to spoil a whole yeah, cut. Right. So it's exactly. not something where you're just spoiling a few sheets here mm -hmm. and there. So we'll leave that blank. Okay. You can put in speed and spoilage tables. Typically people don't on a cutter. You can put in a setup cost, but it's already going to charge the setup minutes. Um, and a linear gap would be for something with roll stock as well. Um, there's really nothing else you need to do when you're cutting the parent sheet. The only thing you may want to do here is um, you may want to force a quantity in job costing and data collections. That way the operator can't skip it. Mm -hmm. And you may also want to put in a description to let the operator know what is the quantity that we're looking for here. In this case, we're looking for total cuts, which is really the lifts times the, the number of cuts. And this is going to show up in data collections. When the data collection operator selects the process, mm -hmm. um, he'll go and work on it, he'll come back, he'll clock out of that process, and that's when it's going to ask him for the quantity, and it's going to show him that description, kind of like a little cheat sheet for Good. him. Okay? Perfect. All right. And that's it. That's absolutely everything you need to do to set up a cutter. Okay. Okay. Now, what if I wanted to set up a process where I wasn't necessarily cutting the parent sheet, but I was going to cut the price sheet? Okay, sure. Very simple. Um, mm -hmm. And now that we've got the parent sheet process already set up, it's even simpler. Okay. What I can do, um, it's the same piece of equipment that I would be using, so I'm going to modify this one. And by changing the process code to something else, it's going to create a new one. So now I can just change the description here to cutting press sheets. And of course, I will want to make sure I change my costing method because this is going to drive the quantity that's going into uh, the process. Um, again, you know, I probably want to leave the units per cycle still at 250. That is a, a default. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, um, if you have caliper in the paper, Enterprise will ignore that 250 and it will go by the caliper of the paper. And you'll actually see when you select this in a, an estimate or an order, you'll see that units per cycle change. Okay. Um, to be whatever the um, it, whatever can fit in the size lift you have with okay. that caliper. Good. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. So let me save this one. And I actually already have another process set up. We can take a quick look at for finish trimming a book. Again, this is done on the cutter. And in this case, I again choose what's going into the cutter, and that's the final product. And really, the only other differences would be um, I might change my descriptions here a little bit. And I can bind all components because if it is a book, I might have uh, multiple components, one for the cover, one for the text. So I want to take into account the paper from all components. And I can use the book spine thickness. So we'll look at the spine thickness, taking into account the folded pages right. um, the in this process, book, yeah. the entire book. Okay. Right. Good. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, that seemed pretty simple. Great. Do you have any other questions? Uh, not right now, no. Well, That's thank good. you. Thank you. And thank you uh, for another episode of VPMS Tech Talk. I'm Joanne LaFlan. I'm Chris Costa. Please look forward for more to come.